Welcome iOS developers. For today's quick tip, I want to show you this cool new drawing app I just made, Pressure Draw. It is a simple drawing program with one little twist. If I touch the screen lightly, it makes a thin line, like this. But if I press harder on the screen, it makes a thicker line, like this. But wait a second, iPhones don't have pressure sensitive screens, do they? So uh, how did I do this? Did Apple give me a top secret prototype iPhone with a pressure sensitive screen? No, no, they didn't do that. Why, why would they even? No. The answer is that I'm taking advantage of a new UI touch property in iOS 8 called Major Radius. You can think of Major Radius as basically a measurement of the size of the touch that the screen receives. I'm using it here to approximate touch pressure because for human fingertips, they tend to squish and the touch circle gets larger the harder you press against things. Note that this doesn't work in the simulator or if you have metallic fingers. Sorry, Iron Man. But for the rest of us, it does work, kinda. The problem that I'm running into is that the granularity is pretty crude right now. The smallest radius I get is this 25.52429, and then it goes from there to like 38.29, and then 51 point something. Um, I can get to some higher numbers if I like touch the entire phone with my palm, but that's kind of it. For a single finger, there's no real variation in between these numbers, which is weird because like these super precise floats kind of suggest there should be, right? So if I turn off my little bit of lerping between major radius sizes, yes, lerping is a thing, Google it, you can see that the jumps in between my brush, brush size are actually pretty abrupt. So in practice, I'm not sure I would use this for a real drawing program. Sorry, pressure draw, you will never see the light of day. So where could you use it? Well, you could certainly use it for non-essential UI polish tweaks. Do you have a particle effect that goes off when the user presses a button? Well, you could use the major radius value to determine just how many particles you shoot off. Ooh, that was, a, that was a lot of dollars. Or you could change the volume of the sound that accompanies the effect, or both. I kind of wonder if you could use this as a poor man's force touch. This is a UI pattern that Apple's looking to establish on the Apple Watch, and maybe this is sort of a jerry-rigged way to apply this to devices that don't have pressure-sensitive screens. But frankly, I'm not sure about this one yet. That's why I got a big question mark here. I would say proceed with caution. Honestly, I think the best use of major radius might be not to detect touch pressure, but instead to distinguish big, ungainly fingers from thinner, elegant fingers. Here's the thing, in games in particular, if you look at a lot of the good, really high quality stuff out there today on touchscreen devices, they will cheat to make sure their players are doing the right thing. Here's a favorite example of mine. This is the game 10 million, which you should totally buy if you haven't yet. It's on the App Store and the Play Store. So check this out. Uh, here you can see I'm moving my piece to a point where I'm really only about 30% towards making a valid move. But the game kind of nudges me a little bit forward so that my piece settles in a place that makes a match. And it works the other way too. Uh, here I've overshot my move by about like 70%, right? But the, once again, the game is cheating a little bit and kind of settling my move back into a place that makes a valid match. Isn't that brilliant? I'll, I'll answer that for you. Yes, yes it is. This game is nearly invisibly to me doing what it can to make me feel like I am a good player. And it's these kind of design decisions that can make the difference between a game that feels right and a game that doesn't. So tying this back into major radius, say you've got a game with a bunch of elements densely packed onto the screen, maybe a grid-based puzzler or a hex-based strategy game. You can help out your players by looking at where they touched on the screen and the size of their touch, and then using a little logic to guess at what game element they really meant to click on. So even if I'm playing your game with my big fat thumb, I can still touch all of the right elements. Anyway, those are just a couple random ideas. I've asked around here, and so far we're only using major radius in one place. Uh, it's basically a testing only feature where we put up a little indicator that shows where our testers touched on screen, and we're using major radius to decide how large of a circle to draw. But if you end up using it in your code, please let me know. I am dying to find out what you did. You can you know, put it in the comments below. Major radius appears to be supported on any device that runs iOS 8 back to like the iPhone 4S. So there you go. Thanks again to Dave Oster on the Google News team for the tip. But what about you? Do you have a tip that would make for a good quick tip? Send it in. You can email me at the address here. If we use it on the air, I will send you a t-shirt or maybe a top secret iPhone prototype with a pressure sensitive screen, uh, but, but most likely the t-shirt. Anyway, thanks again for watching. As always, click here to see more videos from Route 85, our show for iOS developers, and I will see you soon.